brought to you you great aside set amazing defenders well this is a new series that i'm starting out in 2023 it's called great aside set where i will take a side set that that happen, that has been released this year this side set will be uh, released on january 19th of this year and we're gonna grade it for Yu-Gi-Oh! realism okay guys um, so we'll grade it and there will also be like you know the loser awards um, where we will have the worst aspects of sets in the year and this that will be loser awards side set edition for and there will be the Yu-Gi-Oh! awards you know just normal awards we're we'll talking about that throughout the rest of this video okay with that being said let's get on with this video Okay, so let's talk about it. There are three archetypes in Amazing Defenders that you we need to look that we are looking out for. That's Rescue Ace, Mikanko, and Purely. Right? Now, we're going to go to the next slide to tell us more about these archetypes. So, the archetypes that um, I feel that have the best... Um, Archetype potential, rather like uh, you know, competitive potential. We have Purely at twenty percent, Mikanko at forty percent, and Rescue Ace at sixty percent. First, let's go with Purely. Purely is at the lowest twenty percent. Now, you may wonder why is this archetype at a at a measly twenty percent? Because you are trash. Let's talk about it. First of all, Purely is mostly beast. While yes, One for One has been reprinted, and it is a good reprint, since it hasn't had a reprint for a long time, it's a level 1, and it's not a level 2. Had it been a level 2, we, there was so much we could do here, there's so much things that could be accomplished, and many combos that could be facilitated right now with Sprite and um, Tri Brigade and all that other things. Being level 1 leaves a lot to be desired, and also the fact that we only have two main deck monsters in this deck, we don't even have more, and the way to summon this deck, you know, the way this archetype works is by using quick play spells, and there's not a lot of main deck monsters, is also lays this archetype, doesn't lay a lot uh, to this archetype, and it leaves a lot to be desired. Why well, you gotta be so complicated? And when we look at the future support, that we don't get... Uh, many uh, archetype, you know, many main deck monsters for this archetype again puts it down at 20%. Uh, the fact that we cannot really use Tri Brigade here in this archetype, it's um, really, which is a really great deck, as we have seen in the OCG and TCG that's uh, Tri Brigade Sprite or Tri Brigade mixed with something is a very viable competitive uh, deck in. Uh, meta scene competitive scene especially tri brigade mixed with something is not anything to be sniffed at it's definitely something to be taken seriously the truth you need to know but obviously with purely that's not the case while yes um we could use, you know and melfi i mean the archetype could use melfi right so it means there's potential right you know like with the synchro two these have a synchro four and they have rank twos but again Mel melfi is mostly level two and purely is level one. There's barely any synergy here. While yes, it is cute that you could use um, Z, uh, double A Zeus. That is not really. If that's your only good point that you have, that's weak source and that's nothing to stand on. Not even mad, just disappointed. And with that being said, and with everything going against this archetype, and with really nothing that it can stand on, with no foundation that it can stand on, with no current archetypes that you could use effectively, now this gets a 20% increase. First, let's talk about the Kanko and see why it gets a higher increase than uh, Purely. First of all, there's, uh, sin since uh, Rituals have more generic support now than they ever did before. For that fact alone, it raises it up from 20%, which initially had, to 40%. So that definitely gives it a boost. But it doesn't go up any further. It's very unconventional. While it is true that unconventional um, 
strategies or archetypes have worked, as we have seen with recently with Runic, which has a very unconventional play style. But again, unconventionalism only works when you have a good foundation to work on. Let us, let us skim through Runic and understand why it works in the competitive scene. It has a good foundation. For example, they have a searcher. They have a searcher card, they have a negate card, and they have a removal card, right? These are the three things that you need in an archetype, essentially for a new archetype, to a good solid foundation. Having a searcher, having a card that negates, and having a removal card. Keep it, keep it short, keep it simple, and having such a simple, strong foundation can take you places. But the other aspect as well is that not only does your foundation need to be simple, but it needs to be easy to access and easy to implement. Now, when we look at Lukanko, we have a bit of mixed messaging here. While yes, the unconventionalism is great, is could be considered fantastic as we use equip spells and whatever, um, is, there, is there a consistent way to be searching these equip spells? No! Typing of Mikanko is all over the place, already being very difficult outside of richer support, really can't uh, add any outside consistency boosting. Yeah, sure, we could add reinforcement on the army, obviously, to get us our Mikanko searcher, you know, for searching monsters. But here's the thing. Our searcher is only for, what, two things? Do we, are we going to get traps in the future? Possibly. Uh, do we have a, do we have a, searcher for traps um you know we don't know and here's the thing there's a lot of question marks with mechanco the foundation l doesn't look simple it doesn't look formulated it doesn't look like it's that we have something to work with here and this is indeed a problem it is okay to be out there but you need to have a strong foundation to build on here and we really don't have a strong foundation here while and this is why i would put it at 40 percent while yes we can argue that there is a uh, ritual support uh that has come over the years that is fantastic that is great but mikanko as a whole right is severely lacking here and definitely needs some serious support while if it gets a second wave, then we could see it in a future set. We could raise this potential up for, you know, the meta scene to maybe possibly a 50 or we're going to a 60%. So it's looking slightly better. And maybe there are some ways you could increase uh, this percentage to a 40 or 60%, maybe 80% right now. But the thing is, is that it's unconventional. And the found, but the problem is, it's the foundation that it has at the moment is not solid. Sometimes you need a solid foundation in order to build something great. And here's the thing with Mechanco, the foundation that it has at the moment is not really solid. It's quite flimsy here. It's a foundation built on sand and this is a bit of a problem. So with all this said, we have the final verdict for Mechanco is 40%. It might do something, it has a chance to do something to enter a competitive scene, maybe a bit of mixtures here, maybe it could um, enter into regionals, maybe it could possibly, would it top? I really don't think so. There's a lot of things going against this archetype, but there's no reason why it can't do something in our competitive scene. Okay, and we have our final, our final archetype, Rescue Ace, at a shocking 60%. The archetype with the most potential to enter a competitive scene and to do some serious damage, I would say, is Rescue Ace. Now, you wonder why. Rescue Ace, yes, it is a bit xenophobic with Fire Hydrant. Don't get it twisted. But what does Rescue Ace have going for it? A solid foundation and great direction. And that is what we're looking for to, uh, to that is what we're looking for to enter the competitive scene. We're looking for direction and we're looking for a solid foundation. When we look, when I look at Rescue Ace, I see something great here. I see something, a good foundation that we can work with. 
we have a fantastic we have a fantastic searcher for monster spells or traps. We have ways to set those monster spells and traps in a unique and also fast way. We have our negation as well, which we can use. I'll bite slow, but we will take it. So, a foundation, we have a we have a good searcher, good uh, negation card, and we have a form of removal. Plus, we have unity in the fact that all of them are machines. This means that we can use Therions, again, or generic machine support, raising that percentage to 60%. And I feel like if Rescue Aces were torn a bit with a such solid foundation here, you can use Therions. There's loads of things here. There's something special here waiting to be, to be unearthed here. It could possibly, with current support that we have at the moment it could even go to a shocking 80 percent there is something special here and definitely has the highest and definitely i would say in amazing defenders is a set that is the most likely it is the octa most likely to enter the competitive scene there's a lot going for it it's got unity in it's got unity in its in its typing because everything is the same type it's got simplicity in the fact that all the effects in the archetype are easy to understand and easy to follow. You know, we like that. We like that a lot. Remember, a simple foundation is good. What matters, in my opinion, you, you if you're starting out as a new archetype, it's better to do one job and do it well and work and do something that works then do a million things and not do any of them right. And this is some of the issues that we see with Mechanco and Purely. Purely at the moment is at 20% simply because there's not enough main deck monsters and we don't have enough level 1 monsters. And while maybe that's a lie, we do have enough level 1 monsters, but the problem is what are boards are we ending on with purely what are we doing here our message our journey our end board everything that we're doing is mismanaged it is careless it is just thrown out there we don't know what the hell we're flipping doing here this is why it also stays at 20 percent we look at mikanko and the direction there is a bit aimless what the hell are we doing here we need to have direction here the direction is completely lost while yes that you can argue yes there are ways to do something and generic ritual support can get us there but the direction to get to that end board is a bit confused we're we are a bit confused we we don't know what we're doing here what is the ideal end board for mechanco you know pure mechanical we don't know remember you need to have a vision of your destination as a new archetype and if you don't have a vision of your destination we got problems we got serious problems here and that's how i feel with mechanical whereas with rescue ace we have a solid foundation and we have a solid vision of our end board we know what we're doing we know what we want and we know how to get there okay so maybe how to get there is plagued with a lot of uh, stumbling blocks but we, we, we dare to dream and we dare to care. And this is important, is that we dare to care. Having a plan is much better than not having a plan at all. And it's been for that reason, the archetype with the highest potential in Amazing Defenders to enter the competitive scene is Rescue Ace at a whopping 60%. And I approve of this. With that being said, Let's now talk about this set as a whole and just give it an overview real quick. So, are there any wild cards in this set? What do I mean by wild card? A wild card basically means is a card that we can see in the set that can enter our competitive scene uh, completely unheard of, just has a simple good effect that I feel the co community and uh, competitive scene at large We'll take it and just roll with it, and we will see it in. We'll see it in loads of decks and loads of uh, you know archetypes, or just in any kind of play in general. And there is none. 
So this is not looking good for amazing defenders as a whole. This is not good at all. This is definitely uh, bringing down some points in terms of being a good set. Let's look at the value card. So what's the value card? Essentially, what is the money card in this set? Is there a card, is there a card in this set that brings in a lot of value? While yes, we can argue that, you know, it's the, um, what is that card again? The Piri Raise map can be argued to be, you know, a value card, but is it really? For five, for five pounds, come on, you know, or, you know, or lower, come on now. It's just had a reprint in a mega tin last year. I'm, so, I'm sorry, if you're below, if your value is below double digits, you're not a value card at all. You're practically garbage. So, no, there is no value card in this set. This is, again, lowering those expectations here, and we're not doing too good. We do have a good reprint, however, which is one for one. Now, that's not saying much. While one for one, yes, is a good preprint because we haven't had a uh, reprint of one for one for a long time, but who is using one for one? Come on now, 2023. Come, let's be serious. Come on now. Come on now. Be real. Who's using one for one now in, in, in the year of 2023 in Yu Gi Oh? Let's be real. Get, get out of here. So, yeah. I mean, the reprint is good. Don't get it twisted, but it is not enough to save this doomed set at the moment. With, with so far three, two points being a failure, this is not good. And finally, we look at legacy support. What is legacy support? Legacy support is essentially an ar ar archetypes that have come out either last year or you know years prior. Have they gotten good support? Have they gotten any support in this set? And there is, and the answer there is none. There is no support for any legacy support. This isn't looking good, guys. This is looking pretty bad. So far, uh, Amazing Defenders is not scoring good points for being a good set. This is not looking good. Let's go to the next slide and see if there's anything we, it can do to redeem itself. We have support update. So, has any um, support? is there any support in Amazing Defenders to justify it being a good set? Is there any support update? Support update meaning is that there is there any support for any current sets that have come? It's zero. Um, there's basically been nothing that has come. There's basically no new support that has come in to update a current or you know or past archetype or strategy in Yu-Gi-Oh. This isn't good. This isn't good at all. This is very bad. With no support update in this set, this is is looking to be a very bad set. And finally, hype. Wait, what was that? Oh, oh, that's right. Did, did anyone know that this set was even releasing in the uh, TCG? Where was the hype for this set? Do you, do you, do you know? Oh, that's right. Yeah, no one knew that this set was even releasing. I mean, yeah, who was paying attention to this set? There was absolutely zero hype for this set. Yeah, this is not looking good, guys. This is not looking good for the set. So far, it's been absolutely abysmal. And, yeah. So far, the grading for this set is looking absolutely atrocious. But, let's move on to the next point. Okay, and so, this set, congratulations, Amazing Defenders. You are, you have favourites to be entering the Loser Award. At the end of the year... I mean, we, I'm going to have the awards, and like the like the Oscars, you know, in uh, Hollywood and Razzies, I'm going to be doing the same thing at the end of the year for sets. Uh, it's going to be for the side sets and for the core sets. These and so far, these are the candidates I can say uh, for the 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 loser awards that I'll be hosting near the end of the year for. For uh, you for the for the sets for the side set edition anyway. Please remember as well before I read these out to you out on the screen that not only will the loser awards will be is not only is uh, I would say that Amazing Defenders being a hot favorite for this, but there will be more. So let's let's read it on. For the worst wild card, we can twenty twenty three candidate is X Y C Tribal Rivals. Now, why do I call it the worst wild card? Well, it's not only is it a reprint, it is a reprint that isn't even new. If you're not even a new card, 
What are you worth? And what, who who knows about this card? Who who is actively playing this card? This is a very bad. If it is supposed to be a wild card, which I believe it is, considering its effect, it was released in 2013, 14, around there. Who uses this card? This card never entered in 2014 or 13, never entered the competitive scene. It didn't do any form of impact, if I can remember, in any sort of competitive, or in any capacity. So yeah. It's definitely a candidate for worst wild card for 2023 in the loser awards. So we'll see if it can keep that title with other uh, other side sets coming up. We'll see whether there is another candidate that can beat it. But so far, I think it's running pretty strong for that position for aiming to be the worst wild card of 2023. We have worst side set of 2023 candidate is Amazing Defenders. Congratulations, Amazing Defenders. Well done. I believe you're going to win the worst side set of 2023. And I feel like in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Awards, you could also, you could be a double whammy winner for winning the worst set of the year. I definitely feel you have the potential to win that award. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to that. We'll see whether you are, whether there'll be a worse side set than this, or what, whether there'll be even a worse set overall than Amazing Defenders. You are definitely going up there in terms of the loser edition. We'll be excited for that. Exciting times, exciting times. Let's go on to the next slide. We have the the next slide. We have the worst support update 2023 candidate is Infernobles. Wow, what great support. Psych, it's not. It's Infernobles. With the worst support update, I definitely think that the win uh, in the loser awards is a candidate here is it is uh is infernobles the fact that it's just a reprint of cards that you don't need in infernobles is not even new support what is going on here what is going on wow wow let's give a clap let's let's raise our hands to this great candidate for our loser awards here it's definitely a top candidate and i feel we can definitely win war support update of 2023 and then we have this Worst reprint of 2023 candidates include Overlay Regen, XRZ Reborn, and Hidden Armory. Wow, I love, I wow, wow, wow. I definitely feel they can win worst reprint. What are we doing with these cards? What are we doing? Who wants these cards? Um, is there interest for these cards? I don't know. I, 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 I'm mind blown. I just, I just don't know. So I definitely feel they have the potential to just win it all and be the worst cards. It's definitely gonna be a battle here. Where I think we're gonna have loads of worst reprint candidates. The one that's gonna be the worst of them all in 2023 is going to be, it's gonna be very tough here. The loser award is looking really, really exciting here. So look out for that in the end of the year. So we, we will uh, talk about that. And then we have, let's go on with the next slide. We have worst value cards. 2023 candidate we have again overlay region exclusive reborn and hidden armory wow two awards that these three cards can win again so not only let's go back to the previous slide so not only can they are they potentially winning worst reprint but worst value cards of 2023 they're winning two loser awards wow guys wow i love this i love it a lot we have a we have a we have a two award candidate here for loser awards that's absolutely great. That's absolutely wonderful. So yeah, I definitely feel it can win that hands down. I I definitely think it can win the, the it can win both of those awards very easily near the end of the year. We'll talk about that near the end of the year with the loser awards. We have the worst hype candidate 2023. Is def I can definitely say without a doubt, amazing defenders. The lack of hype in this for the community in this set is absolutely amazing. I'm sure none of you, mostly, barely any of you, even knew that this set came out. So, yeah, I definitely see it winning uh, th that award. I don't think we're going to get another set which is going to be worse, which is going to be worse hype than this for this year. So, yeah, uh, I can definitely see that happening. We will, but do, rec but do remember that when I'll be releasing more uh, side sets in the grade you know, in the greater side set edition, I will be I will be referencing pre the previous side set that was released uh, released 
before that video and uh, we, we will compete and we'll see and we'll see whether you know there's some cars that could potentially lose are they better off and maybe some of them if they are not as bad some of the cards in this list will get be nominated and might even be removed out of the loser awards altogether if they are you know good but if they're really so bad then they might stay there i mean i mean the better that if their cards are worse than it they'll be kept there as nominations they might even if if they're just bad enough might be put there as you know as um as recommendations or even like you know whatever so don't 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 lose hope don't lose faith they're definitely going to be there okay let's go to the final section the final grade let's talk about it with an overwhelming loads of uh, cards in this set going into the loser award edition and the fact that we can see amazing defenders having the worst having a potential win for worst hyped set and worst set of 2023 we can say overall and final grade is an f for absolute failure of a set this stands for failure definitely uh so overall this is not a good set to get i mean if you want a fun set f is for fun right so get the set um it's great it's fantastic but overall does this add anything to the uh, to to the game um kind of if you're interested in rescue ace with rescue ace being at a, at a shocking 60 percent but here's the thing while rescue ace has the highest potential for entering the set there's another thing that could save this set from being the worst set of the year one of these archetypes that mentioned in this set in order to avoid this set being the worst set needs to in the next Yu-Gi-Oh tournament tcg tournament mind you needs to be in the top 32 minimum to break to make this set not the worst set of the year that's going to be pretty hard it, that's its qualification that's one of the qualification to just have uh you know a regional award that we can put it in a positive light in the yugi awards that's possibly for you know one hit wonder award we're not even going to the other awards they need to win just to break the stigma that it's got right now so it's not looking good i do not have faith that any of these archetypes can even enter top 32 maybe top 64 maybe top 128 i really i really doubt that but you know crazier things have been said the, it's got the backs against the wall this set there's not a lot going for it it's got no hype a, a bad reprints no support for anything useful it's just got everything wrong with this set and it's called amazing defenders well it's amazingly bad at defending itself from all the criticism that it's going to get from the community at large laugh at my joke i'm funny and so with a final grade of f for failure that is all i've got to say about the set and that is all i'm going to talk about when it comes to greater side set side set edition amazing and defenders tune in next time when we'll talk about the next side set whatever that set is called and we're going to see whether it's a good set we'll see whether it will get a higher grade than this and we'll see whether it will not be in the loser awards and whether it has the potential to be in the yugi awards side set edition see you then we come to the end of this video so as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.